Alexander Polly. Well, first I have to say how honored and humbled I am to be following such great human beings, you know, listening to the stories, to the accomplishments, to uh, overcoming the mental obstacles, the beauty and the life shared, the passion, the joy, the fear is truly humbling to me. So, you know, I really truly appreciate this. Um, about me. My mother's Norwegian, my father's Italian, I'm born in Norway, I grew up in Italy. Um, my father has given me a passion to explore what I was not willing to do by myself since I was little. I've spent two months a year for 20 years of my life on a boat. I have more scuba dives than skydives. Um, this has given me a love for the ocean that you know, is beyond what I can explain and express. But more than that, say something like scuba diving that I learned when I was four years old in a pool with homemade tanks because my father was a little bit cuckoo like that. And um, when I was six years old, uh, being given a spear gun underwater that was about as big as me to shoot a fish that was bigger than me, you know? Um, and throughout these experiences that by myself I would have never have done because truly I am a person that lives with fear. I'm, you know, I'm quite scaredy cat if I have to judge myself. But to be able to find that love and that passion and that beauty on the other side is something that I truly owe to my parents and to my father particularly to uh, showing me that I can. I can overcome certain things and it happens to be that I've found, you know, what I've loved the most in this life on the other side of that. Something that I want to touch a point on here is like why I keep on jumping so much. Um, now that I've been jumping for like seven, eight years, why do I keep on jumping month after month? I have to admit it's not just about the flying anymore. It's a large majority, or a large majority, I would say 50% because of the people. The people I'm surrounded by and the community I'm surrounded by is truly something out of the exceptional. Um, the non-judging that goes on, um, the appreciation for each other's differences between the individuals jumping, um, the light state of mind, how do you wake up in the morning, how do you eat breakfast, how are you eating dinner, um, what are you sharing around the dinner table? How are you speaking? How are your eyes shining? These people truly have revolutionized my life in a way that, you know, I, I can't put a price on or anything. Um, the way they relate and interact with each other. I feel that from some point of view, this is, can be compared to climbers or skiers. Or I want to say that as a general, in my experience, I see that there's a common ground on people that enjoy an activity that is in the elements, if it's in the mountains or in the forest or in the ocean, they tend to be happier human beings. You know, they tend to be easier to smile, uh, honest, direct, straightforward. When they ask you, how are you doing? They really mean it. <laughs> it's not like just how are you doing just for sake of conversation. And it's something that I don't take for granted, truly. Um, my preparation, because you know, as many of you, you know, I guess, heard or understand that this is technically a dangerous activity, even if I believe that, you know, the media likes to focus on that one accident that happens in my relatively new sport compared to an accident that happens in climbing and so forth, that is accepted as uh, something that is normal. Um, I feel like I've been preparing for this all my life. I mean, scuba diving can be seen as slow motion flying. If I'm going to try to swim over there, I'm going to go like this. I'm not going to put my chest this way to swim that way. So, I mean, that's just like one of the things. Um, my snowboarding, I used to snowboard semi-professionally until I was 18. I was junior Swiss champion for two years in a row. I was junior Italian champion for a couple of years. This was all in half pipe. Uh, I moved to the States, uh, went to a winter sports school in Colorado, got third in America under 18. Um, this already gave me a passion for airtime, I enjoyed the half pipe. You know, I wasn't necessarily free riding, it was like airtime, 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 airtime. I liked it from the beginning, I was very, very drawn to it. Um, so when I put all of these things together, I remember when I first saw some wingsuit flying videos, 
A friend of mine showed me on, online on YouTube, of course, and I didn't believe him. I didn't believe that was possible. I thought he was showing me Miramax. I thought he was showing me a movie. Uh, it looked like the most incredible thing ever. And deep inside, I felt like I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I'm, I'm too afraid. I'm too afraid of heights. I'm too afraid of dying. Like, that looks totally crazy. But then, why can these people do it and why can't I? Like, am I missing something? Um, and that's where, you know, what my father had given me back at an earlier age, that's when that really truly came into play to me being able to live my dream nowadays. You know, I haven't even dreamt what I do for real now, you know. Uh, it's, it's been truly a revolutionary journey for myself. Um, my friend, would you like to come and uh, try something out here? <laughs> I was afraid you were going to say that. <laughs> now, my sport or my activity here is a very new activity. So what we know about these wingsuits and how they fly and the airfoiling is, um, is, is something very new. So I want to show you a couple of things that in my view, what to do and what not to do and how to be able to do something like this repetitively. You know, uh, without yeah. necessarily risking so much. Yeah. Thanks for making me show what not to do. Yes. You're yes, a good yes, friend. Yes. Yes. Yeah, don't thanks. worry. We kind of went through this, yeah, you got it. You want to explain or I just jump in? Yeah, right foot, also. left foot. Also, ich habe original, er hat mich wenigstens einmal vorher einsteigen lassen, mm -hmm. damit ich so in etwa weiß, was ich mache. So, I, as I'm sure some of you have heard, you know, uh, the media does talk about accidents in the sport. Um, I think a lot of it is because we truly don't have the knowledge of how these suits work properly. And even true professionals in my sport that are considered to be some of the best in the world, in my humble opinion, have not necessarily been flying these suits in the correct way to be flown from a mountain. Flying one of these suits from a plane and flying it from a mountain is two possibly very different things. So this is the baby. This makes my dreams come true. <laughs> hey. What you're happened? You're fat. <laughs> Appar <laughs> Apparently, I am. Mm, one more, come on. Off kids. Stretch it oh. out. Very nice. There we go. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh. to give you. <laughs> <laughs> to give you something basic now, I'm just going to speak about really quickly basic safety on how to be able to fly one of these things. When you are flying in max position, so being able to get as much distance as you can, you would pretty much hold your arms parallel to your body, pushing your weight forwards. How you want to fly is always with your arms a little bit back. That means that whenever you're flying, you're flying with more speed and you always have a little bit of reserve to pull up if in need. Um, I believe that a lot of accidents happen these days because people do not talk about these small details. Um, like, <laughs> other example. If you would want to turn with one of these suits, there's plenty of different ways to be able to turn these suits. If you're playing in the sky, you see people turning them in all funny ways. Arms, <laughs> knees, legs, everything. Um, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, is that you would wish... Where is this going? Yep. All righty. Young screen are good. So you would want to imagine that you want to turn this wing like an airplane turns. You don't want to bend one wing more than the other. You know, it's not like you want to bend the right wing or bend the left wing. The wings want to stay symmetrical. You're tilting your whole axis to turn. This will guarantee you a straight, fast line without, if I can compare it to something, you know how a rally car would slide? compared to our ice skates or a pair of skis staying on an edge actually hold a turn. Um, so truly, e even my knowledge, to be honest, you know, is very limited on these suits. You know, what's happening with the airfoil as the air moves over and under the wings. Um, it's, it's such a new sport that we are truly uh, finding it out step by step. And um, I'm going to explain a little bit more and show you a video now so Perfect. I can explain. 
Can I keep that on for the discussion? Yeah, you I must. Think I think awesome. you can like flap around in it. And Are you actually going to help me out of that thing, or? Yes, I can. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I, how do you I want to hand? Wait, wait. Let me show this quickly. This oh. is interesting. This is actually one of the new brands of wingsuits. So the wingsuit and the parachute are the same. It's not that we have a wingsuit and a parachute. They're actually the same thing in the same container. This is the small handle that just to be able to show you, it's not a mechanism that opens the parachute or a spring. It's actually a small parachute that inflates with air. So it's kind of physics, right? This will inflate and it will pull out the main one. So accidents by the parachute not opening don't exist anymore in this age. It's a uh, human error, truly, not the equipment. Great. Thank can, you, Dudley. Can I go and fly through the forum now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Push hard, though. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. That's not too bad. Not too bad. Yeah. Very nice. Thank you very much. Can I fly now, or do you have to practice even more than you that? You have to practice. You have to practice. You have All to right. push really hard. Right. Awesome. <laughs> so we're going to start with a little video here. I want to show you the example of what can be proximity flying in a safe manner, meaning that we're flying next to something that's vertical, where you always have an escape route in case you need it, and where the flying gets more complicated. And when people perhaps see some of my videos and misjudge the fact that I would go and fly something like this the first time, uh, I'm going to try to show you guys how, how I work my way down step by step, working on visual checkpoints, visual references, and uh, so on. So this is a place in uh, Switzerland. You probably pretty well known, Lauterbrunnen. As you can see here, we're constantly flying next to, just next to a wall, so whenever we wish, we can uh, turn right and move into open space. You know, then perhaps people think, ah, look, it's so spectacular, so amazing. But actually, this is uh, not as complicated as it looks. It's uh, relatively safe, you know, being able to disconnect from the wall, getting into open airspace before deploying the parachute and so forth is a key. Now, here comes the good one. This is where I really enjoy. Now, you're going to see the same jump three times now. I wish for you to pay attention to how far I am off the ground uh, on each jump. Uh, I am pretty much flying the same line three times. Um, this is my first flight on that specific line, so I am truly just scoping the line out from up above seeing if the turns uh, that I want to accomplish are actually doable. Um, so you want to fly the line above tree height, per se, before you actually go and uh, zigzag in between, <laughs> like if you were snowboarding. <laughs> um, this, for who is curious, this is in Chamonix. Agri de Midi is right in front. This is Brevant. Um, this is the second flight. Could you pause it here a second? Now. It's difficult, wait. Laser? No? No laser? Oh, wait, it's the other one. No? Oh, yeah, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, guys. So, on the first one was already uh, just scoping out, but here I'm going to start working on checkpoints. The first one is going to be here. So when I pass that rock, I know I'm going to start making a right-hand turn. When I come out of the gully, I'm going to be more or less here. When I pass these rocks, I know I have to start making a right-hand turn over here towards this rock. And as soon as I pass this gap, I know I have to make a left-hand turn. Yeah, go ahead, you know, you can play. As you can see here, I'm already gradually getting closer and further closer to the terrain. Um, you can see these rocks here. As soon as I pass these, I initiate my right-hand turn. I know I'm going towards this gap. As soon as I pass this gap, it's a hard left. Um, you want to do this so you're working on muscle, you're working on visual muscle memory. So when I'm actually spending time in the gondola, I'm actually, <laughs> I'm actually visualizing, I'm closing my eyes 
and I'm visualizing right turn, left turn, so forth and so forth. Um, this is a back shot of one of the flights. This is how I want to represent how you want to try to keep your arm wings as symmetrical as possible when you're doing these turns. Uh, as you can see, I'm not bending one more than the other. They're staying pretty even throughout the whole thing and it's trying to be able to carve it in a smooth, asymmetric manner. Um, this uh, truly uh, blows my imagination still when I watch it myself. <laughs> A very happy man. Uh, wow. I cannot believe that's me. <laughs> um, here now you're going to be able to see the final run uh, where I actually I, I felt like I pushed the line as much as I felt comfortable. Um, on this, on the way up in the gondola, I'm constantly looking. Okay, rock, left line, rock, right, tree, left. Uh, so I don't have to think when I'm flying. I'm just purely going off of visual checkpoints, like maybe a Formula One driver or a race car driver is going. So checkpoint, turn right, and so forth. Mm. Happy days. <laughs> left turn. And here we go. Here you can see that it's a whole different story from the first flight. Now I'm in the forest playing bird games, left and right. <laughs> happy days, happy days. Thank you. Now, here I want to explain where the sport is actually becoming more dangerous because the wingsuits are getting so much better and that the possibilities really are, uh, are exceeding themselves. Can you pause it here a second? So here I'm going to show something that I'm doing wrong on this jump. Everything goes great, but because I'm learning and I'm giving myself specific guidelines on how to fly, this is a line I wouldn't do anymore. Here I am flying pretty much maxed out at my maxed flight, and I'm trying to clear this. You know what I mean? Or I will clear this. Now, because I plan to be able to try to do this, you know, for a long, long time, um, I need to give myself specific guidelines with things I will not do. So try, flying max glide over something is something that I have taken out of my textbook. Even if over there would be the best flight ever, Skip it, I'll take a helicopter if I really want to go and fly that side of the mountain. You know, and so forth. Uh, go for it. Very happy days, very happy days. <laughs> Still can't believe that's me. Can you pause it here again? Pause. Now, this is where I think is the most dangerous part of the sport. Because the wingsuits are flying so well and um, Instead of just flying towards the exit that would be there, this is the safety area. This is when you, if you pass all of this, this is when you can fly out and deploy your parachute. So if I was flying straight towards this point here, instead of turning towards this side of the mountain to then fly down here, this is when the flying truly becomes three-dimensional. And uh, this is where I feel that a lot of the accidents in my sport and, uh, you know, my brothers and sisters from other mothers, as I would like to call them, uh, you know, and tend to uh, have a lack of knowledge and uh, lack of studying because not only you have to make sure that, you know, your flying capabilities are fine, you also need to make sure that this line here is at an angle that you can fly. So either you're Googling Earth it or you have to go up and walk the line to make sure that it's not... 20 degrees, which I can't fly. But it's going to be like a 30 degrees, 35 degrees, which is something that I can. Go for it. Um, so here again, you know, we're two people over there. Hello. <laughs> to then being able to carve into this, and again, you know, some of uh, my very, very happy. You can see a bug, a bug comes right, boom. You know, that the guy got suckered right there on the camera screen. And again, here it's a safe way of flying, you know, that, that last part uh, where you're just flying next to something. 
Uh, here I'm very lucky. I'm followed by one of the best cameramen in the world. I don't know a lot of other people that would be able to film in such a terrain like this without taking his eye off the target. <laughs> if, you, if you look, he's not necessarily looking where he's going. He's just trusting that I'm going to do it right. Um, and again, this is an example of where you can fly proximity very safely because the rock just drops off and right afterwards you're flying into open space where you can deploy your parachute safely and so forth. Very, very, very happy days. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. I would like to somewhat finish off with the fact that if you have seen this or perhaps you've seen the cave footage that's on YouTube and so forth, I, when people tell me ah, it was a stunt or something like that, I truly feel that is wrong. For me, it was not a stunt at all. It was not a daredevil move. For me, it was uh, my form of self-expression, if that makes any sense. My own art, if I can say it that way. Um, Now, one more thing. Why am I intending to do more videos? Why do I feel that I want to keep on sharing these, uh, these things? Because for the first years, I, I didn't share any of my videos. I didn't. I, I kept them for myself and for my friends, and I put them on private. And I had my 20 friends, which I would send them out the link, and that they would be able to watch it until later on somebody told me, you know what, Alex, you should actually share it. Um, I currently have zero sponsors. I sign zero contracts. I do this for myself and for my soul. I, I believe that things of this kind can only be done for yourself. You cannot be doing something of this kind for a sponsor or as a stunt or for somebody else because potentially there's too much risk involved. You know, uh, I'm not a special forces, uh, uh, special forces military agent that uh, can die on the job and is okay with that. You know, that's not an option for me. <laughs> and so forth. With that, I would like to conclude with the fact that I want to put out more videos, is that through these videos that I have put out on YouTube, I've had people reach out to me that have, um, have truly touched me and inspired me to, uh, to give more and to produce more of this, uh, my form of self-expression art. It might be a little bit cheesy, but that's how I feel about it. Um, I can mention one person in particular that truly, truly made a, a, a change on me. Um, it was after my first video that I put on YouTube, Reality of Human Flight. This person started getting in contact with me and he explained to me that he was lying in the hospital. And uh, he was saying something like he had three, four months to go. And he, you know, we got into discussion and he was explaining to me how every morning he would wake up, he'd play my video, and for those five minutes he was not in the hospital anymore. You know what I mean? He was flying with me. He was, you know, he would totally forget about his current state of mind, his current uh, life affairs, if you want to call them. After this man passed, his family got in contact with me. And um, now I'm getting goosebumps. And his family were sending me letters and explaining to me how in those last months, how that video and how that conversation, the fact that we kept in touch front and back, was really giving him some sort of daily joy, a daily dose of uh, euphoria. And that is uh, pushing me to do more. I feel that that's one of the reasons why I, I'm here today to speak and so forth, while I'm willing to feel a little bit uncomfortable in front of all these cameras and the light and so forth, explaining my passion and joy and love for what I do. And um, that if I can affect somebody that I will never meet, and I'll never get the chance to meet, but I'll I'm able to influence them or inspire them in any way, shape, or form, I mean, I don't know anything greater than I can do with myself, ever than to inspire somebody that I will never meet or never get the chance to meet, giving something back to others. So that's mucho, mucho.
Thank you for having me.